red, red one. UB40. I know the name of this band and the song, but nothing else of what they've done. They're one of many one-hit wonders. Let's see what key it's in. Here, here. Here's the one. Here's the one. Here's my. Super dissonant note here. So that. Mm, this is the This is the one. Bum, bum, it's a major third. So when the kid. C sharp or D flat? D flat has six flats. C sharp has eight sharps. So you generally call the key of the D flat, D flat. Could call it C sharp, but that'd be really, really difficult to, to write out in standard notation. So for those reasons, you, you kind of avoid the key of C sharp. But kind of the, the interesting thing about this chord progression is if you went off of the bass, you would probably get the wrong chords, thinking that you know. Um, You'd probably get um, what is this for? One. You'd probably get that just fine, and then you get the five. One, and then four, and then five. Those are all fine, but right here, one, four, two. Two is not a minor two chord. So one, four, two, five in the key of D flat would be D flat major, and then it'd be G flat major or G flat major down here. Um, and then a two would be an E flat minor, and it's not an E flat minor there, despite the fact that the bass is playing in E flat. It sort of suggests to your ear that it's an E flat minor, just because you know our ears are. In the West, we're socialized to hear uh, bass notes play the root of the chord. And then it goes back to the five, which is the A flat major. So D flat major, G flat major, E flat minor to uh, A flat major is kind of what our ears would think um, if we we're just kind of starting our ear training journey there. You know, the one, four, two, five, and we would think major one chord, major four chord, minor two chord, major five chord, okay, made my point. Instead of the two chord, what you actually have is a five chord in second inversion, meaning what you have is an A flat major over an E flat in the bass. So the E flat that seemed to suggest an E flat minor is actually just playing the fifth of that chord instead. Instead of the root of the E flat minor, it's playing the fifth of the A flat major. Uh, so, Red Red Wine. If you ever want to play UB40's Red Red Wine, you got to make sure that you accurately play the A flat over E flat. Meaning, if you're going to play an A flat chord, that E flat needs to be the note that's in the bass. Speaking of which, how do I even play an A flat chord? That would be four six six five four four. So to play it A flat over E flat, what you would do is you would play uh, X six six five four four on the guitar in standard tuning. And then oh, the last chord of UB forties Red Wine is actually uh, A flat dominant nine. It's like A flat nine. It's very confusing when you say flat nine. Sometimes you think of that the ninth is flat, but in this case, it's A flat is the name, and then just nine. So A flat dominant nine to make it more clear. Um, you would just play that, and then you would you know suspend suspend the fourth to get that like final little bit of accuracy there for that last chord. And so the way you would play that is on the guitar. You play four X. Four three two X. So four 
X432, and that's a pretty standard voicing on the guitar for that type of chord. And it's like a nice way to wrap up a chord progression because it kind of sets up the D flat major, which you could play on X46664 um, on the guitar. So the whole song, I mean, the reason I think this is kind of like even worth commenting on, it's like, it's such a fun, catchy song. Um, but the fact that it's played, it's kind of played on the organ. And a lot of people just would just think, oh, hey, you know, that's a bass. That's that's kind of an organ if you listen closely. And then that's all that's all you would think about it. But if you actually wanted to challenge yourself and your ear and to, you know, be able to apply what you're hearing to your instrument, you need a little bit of music here. And to go a little bit farther and say, hey, I'm going to play this on the guitar, that instantly makes you, it instantly catalyzes your inner training and your music theory. It, it makes it kind of materialize something new. And that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool because then you're saying, as a musician, you're not, the, you're not just somebody who only can listen passively to a piece of music. Um, but you can actively interact with it and say, okay, well, what's going on here? What can I do with this? What can I, you know, what, what new thing can I, can I create from this? How can I take these chords and this chord progression uh, and recontextualize it on a new instrument, you know? And uh, yeah, it's kind of awkward in the sense that it's in a key of D flat, but you know, that's something that you can handle if you know how to play a bar chord or if you don't want to play a bar chord then you use some more theory and you transpose using a capo you can capo four and uh, play most of these chords you know right away or you can play uh, uh, you can play really interestingly on capo two and start playing kind of relative shape of b major because B major capo two suddenly takes you to C sharp. C sharp is D flat, and uh, you can even tune the first string down a half step so that uh, your first string resonates with with the, that key. But uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you don't have a guitar in front of you. It just sounds like I'm speaking an alien language. But uh, anyway, yeah, UV40 red red one, key of D flat, not a two chord but a five chord in second inversion, and the last chord is a dominant nine chord. All right, so uh, have a good time with that. Hopefully I'll write these chords in the uh, video description, and uh, have a wonderful day.